rapper 60s You get rich or die trying I'm on my 50 Collecting rent checks First to the 15th huh? Life and starlight Count my lucky stars I'm alright Things are looking up My desires are on sight Gotta keep grinding Make sure that it lasts forever Not only one night I called I, I, Alright so I'm gonna share a secret With you <laughs> Um, I did Nick. I do have a nickname for you. Oh no! <laughs> okay. And I hate to do it on the show, right? Because you might like it, you might hate it. I don't know. I'm scared. Um, but you know, uh, I, I, you might not be able to tell, but I, I kind of have like a, you know, I, I stutter a little bit or whatever. So, so your name is very hard for me to say, like fast, like especially on you know TV or whatever the big show, right? So um, I've coined you as Double L Seven. <laughs> I like it because <laughs> you're my secret agent. You're my secret agent. You're new. You're new to the scene, and uh, kind of undercover a little bit. But you know what? I'm, I'm really glad to have you because I feel like you know when entrepreneurs meet other entrepreneurs, there's this like mutual understanding of like, okay, I can see us doing business together for a long time, right? Like we get that with you. I'm gonna share something for the, for the folks at home. Um, the, the couple deals that we've done together, you know, in this marketplace, everyone's like, oh, it's, you know, there's, there's no deals or it's a buyer's market. It's a buyer's market, or excuse me, it's a seller's market, right? It's a seller's right. market. Um, the first house that we purchased together, you got us a 17% discount off of asking price, right? And, and it, it was a flip, but it was an easy flip. And, you know, I don't know how you did it, but you did it. The second, right? The second deal that we did together you were able to get us a 21% discount yeah. off of the asking price. Now that might not seem like a lot to some, but that, that was $40,000. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so our, our you know, it, it is a seller's market, but at the same time, you know, you, you we've coined you a double L seven <laughs> for a reason, right? <laughs> Who's going to get it done? You are. Um, so before we get into like real estate and, 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 and um, all the tips that we're going to give to our viewers here today, you know, tell us a little bit about your background. Like, you know, how did you get into real estate and you know, tell us a little about how you got here? Yeah. So my, um, my original path, you know, back in the day was I, um, I did PR and marketing. That was my, that was my job path. That was my degree path. That's what I did. So I was, Actually, for a majority of my career, I was director of marketing for a West Coast based golf course management company. So I worked um, and oversaw marketing for all of our golf courses in our portfolio. So we were basically like a, a property management company, but for golf courses specifically. So I handled the marketing for those courses from Florida, Virginia to California, Colorado, like all over the country. Um, I kind of did their websites. I wrote all of their content, did all their advertising buys, managed our graphic designer, wrote the press releases, you name it. I kind of oversaw um, all of those aspects, which I really enjoyed. And um, I really loved the customization that each property had their individual personalities. And I got to be a part of kind of the branding and overall like market space that these properties were being consumed by those people in those particular markets. So that was really where I came from and what I was doing prior yeah. to getting into real estate. High level. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I had a good time and, you know, that that took its course. You know, I used to live in California. I moved to um, South Carolina five and a half years ago. And when I made the move, my company was kind enough to let me continue working remote from here. And as that path kind of dwindled down the road of that's a little difficult, that's not really yeah. bringing the same kind of result as you know I wanted for myself, um, we parted ways and I kind of took a little time off and you know, before I had moved here, I actually started my real estate licensing in California. I did all of my courses. I was studying for the exam. I, you know, I was I was moving towards this path. But when we moved, it all kind of stopped because I was in a new market. I was in a new area. I wasn't really sure and um, didn't feel like the right time. But, you know, nothing ever feels like the right time to do something kind of major with yourself. 
Yeah. So when COVID came around and, you know, we were kind of evaluating like, what is, what is my goal? What do I want to do with myself? What, where do I want to fit in here into, you know, our home life and, and supporting our family and providing, it just sort of came back like, Hey, how about this dream I've always had of wanting to get into real estate? Why not now? And um, that's kind of just said, fine, let's do it. And I took lockdown and I did my courses online and got yeah. hooked up with um, a team. Actually, my goal, I wanted to be, I wanted to be on a great team. I wanted to work with people who, who really had, a good pulse on the market and really knew what they were doing. And the person that we bought our house from was um, the Durant team. Oh, and, great, great. I was wondering yeah. how you ended up with uh, the Durant team. Yeah. And yeah. actually it was funny during, during COVID, she called me and was yeah. like, Hey, are you wanting to sell your house? You know, everyone wants to, you know, sell a house these days, you know, yeah. the market is so like light on sales. And I said, no, but I'm glad you called because I'm getting my license and I'd love to work with you. And she said, let me know when you get licensed and come aboard. So she uh, she welcomed me onto the team and she's been a huge resource to let me learn yeah. you know, all of the nuances and all of the questions you have as a new agent. And um, I've learned a ton. And I think that's kind of helped me help you guys so much, just having that knowledge base. It's good to have like, uh, I guess like a mentor or coach or someone to help yeah. you with this, with everything too. Right. And, yeah. I, and I'll tell you like, so you're, um, you know, ideally like, where would you say that it is like your, your sweet spot in, in Columbia? Because, you know, being, you know, I, I'm relatively new as well, like less than 10 years, you're about five years here. And it took me a long time to figure out like where I wanted to do business because, you know, West is North and South and you know, all these, the streets don't make sense. <laughs> if you're not so where, where are you right now like ideally where where do you do business well i um i live in the northeast so that's the most you know broad knowledge base i have is the northeast kind of area yeah. and working with you all i'm starting to kind of get a little more comfortable with the downtown market kind of learning those little neighborhoods i know i reach out to you and christy a lot about like hey about how about this neighborhood what do you know yeah. and that really helps me kind of get a gauge and i'm starting to understand like the areas and the price points, but it's also just research too, just finding out sales history and kind of understanding, you know, what is this neighborhood doing financially? And then I can kind of gauge generally where, you know, what that falls into and what would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I you know, with us, like we kind of focus in that um, uh, big, try to find like the biggest buyer's pool. Right. So like medium home prices, average, you know, of, Houses sold is right around that 225 price point and below. But um, you know, you're your professionalism. I see you selling multi million dollar houses as well, and I mean that. I mean that, and maybe that comes That'd from nice. you, know, <laughs> you know doing everything that you've been doing um, in, in your background. Now, as a kid growing up, you loved real estate, right? Because you remind you remind me a lot of my wife, and I remember you two having a conversation about growing up on a farm and playing yeah. with the pigs and the goats and all that, right? Oh yeah, I did not. I grew up basically in a construction site. My parents had this vision for this house and they bought this old farmhouse. It was probably built in the early 1900s yeah. and um, it, it was constantly under renovation. I mean, we rebuilt and added on. So I've been crawling through dirt and construction sites ever since I was, you know, five years old. And um, I, it's funny, my dad was a police officer. That was his um, job growing up. But, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, which is going to be interesting because we used to, he used to take me onto construction sites and we would basically like go through any house that was being built. You know, they would have me break and enter basically. Well, B &E? <laughs> yeah, basically. With, with your pops, the cops. Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> I guess you can do it with anybody. We were doing no harm. We were just looking. But I, yeah. um, I love it because I actually love seeing houses just in studs and I can figure out, I just like to kind of guess like, what are they going to put here? How are they going to configure this? Or, you yeah. know, or how would I change that? And, you know, I just, I love that kind of stuff. And I, you know, we used to go through model homes as just a fun Saturday thing to do. Like just go look at all the houses. So I've That's been, cool. yeah. Yeah. I heard now you have two boys just like we do. How old are your boys? 10 and seven. 10 and seven. Yeah, so same same age range, I guess. Basically, you know, 
I, I heard a, a quote. Um, I can't think of who. Maybe it was Stacy Rossetti. We were talking about legacy, and it, you know, it wasn't so much about legacy. Isn't so much about the houses that you leave your kids, but it's more about the people that they become. You know, and um, I, 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 it's interesting with, with your dad how he kind of influenced you a little bit, and maybe, maybe our kids will do something with, with what we got. You know, if they don't, that's okay. They, yeah. they can be, they can become who they're meant to be because of the work that we're putting in now. Yeah. Which is cool. Hey, so I, I'm a huge Wayne's World fan. <laughs> um, and I, I think really that's, this is like turning into like the, the Wayne's World of real estate. But um, I have, you know, Wayne, Wayne and Garth, they used to always do this like top 10. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. You know, nothing crazy, but um, I created a top five for the reasons why we love working with you. And I think that the listeners would have a, a ton of value by going through this. As a real estate agent, how do you approach a real estate investor and what can you do for that real estate investor um, to start working with them so you can have a client that does high volume, right? And mm -hmm. then as a real estate investor, what do you want to look for in a real estate agent? You know, because there's a lot of real estate agents out there. There's a lot of great ones in this group and we'll continue to interview them as well and pick their brains. But you do some really cool stuff for us. So can I share this list? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. Let's see. Boom. Let me know if that pops up. There we go. Can you see it? Yes, I can see it. All right, cool. So let, let's run through this because I think a lot of people can learn from this. And, you know, as an investor and, and as an agent and it, working together, you know, um, you, you listen to podcasts, you listen to um educational stuff and they always say hey make 100 offers make 50 offers how many offers did you make this week and i'm a big believer in making offers you know but at the same time if you have someone like leslie like a double l7 on your squad you know as the investor like you don't have to always be the one making the 100 offers like you could have two or three agents that are making 10 or 15 each on different parts of town or whatever right so um we're gonna run through this so number one uh, you asked for our business, did you not? I did. Yeah. And um, you know, what's crazy is we've been doing real estate for a long time. Most of my friends are real estate people or agents, right? Um, but not everybody says, hey, can I, can I, I'm going to bring you business. I want to do business with you. And I don't know if it's because we were friends or what the deal is, but you were like, hey, what, you know, what do you want? I'll go find it, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's actually interesting because, you know, we have the mutual friends, um, which is how I, you know, we came to know one another when I was living in California. Uh, a good friend of ours said, hey, we know someone lives in South Carolina when we were going to move. You should reach out to them. And we got connected or Christy and I got connected through Facebook. Yeah. And, um, we met up once and, you know, you all live on the west side of town, which is basically like the other side of the world, basically. Yeah. And um, so, you know, our friendship never really grew and blossomed from there. But when I started my real estate endeavor and I created a Facebook page for my real estate, invited all my friends group to join it, you know, she was one that joined it. And I was reaching out to everyone that that did join it to say, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. You know, if there's ever a need, let me know. And I actually hesitated when I got to reaching out to Christy. And I was like, I'm not sure I should because one, I had forgotten what you all did. <laughs> and, okay. and two, I was like, well, you know, we weren't really like that good of friends. We knew each other, but not really. And I don't know if she would think it's weird. Um, but I just finally told myself, like, just just do it. The worst she can do is be like this weird girl. I don't really want to talk to her and say no. But she immediately responded back with this and refreshed my memory of what you did. And I was so glad that I reached out and I was like, this is great what a great, you know, resource this is, what a great connection this is. And, you know, I would have been stupid to not reach out. And, you yeah. know, this is where we are today, just because I kind of just said, let's just do this and see what they say. The worst they can say is no. Yeah. You, you just described everyone that I've ever invited to the Cole REI Facebook group. Right. And they're like, I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> so just do it. Yeah. Just do just it. Do right? it. That's the just lesson. That's the lesson. And it, and it comes full circle. Um, you know, it's cool how we know each other. And uh, your good friend, Scott, good friend, Scott and Nicole um, are yeah. my son's uncle and aunt. Yeah. Uh, a 16 year old. And now we're, now we're hanging out doing real estate deals together. Who would have thought? Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. 
All right, um, number two, seek to understand. Seek to understand. So you probably have a system for when you're sitting down with a, um, you know, like a normal retail buyer saying, hey, what's important to you, right? Um, is that system different for investors? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, you all are investors in general are bottom line people. You know, it's not an emotional connection you have to a property or anything. It's, you know, are the is the bones, is the location, is the value there to make this make sense for us? And, you know, in the beginning, throwing stuff at you guys and as you kind of educated me through your process, I feel like I got a good grasp on what it is that you need out of a property for it to make sense. So I can kind of vet things up front. Sometimes it's questionable. Sometimes I'm not sure it's going to make sense, but maybe you all see it in a different way, or yeah. maybe there's another way we can go about doing this or how long has it been on the market? Is this going to be something that we could, you know, get a great deal on. So really having that understanding of what, your specific formula is, is, is very helpful because then I can kind of do that legwork up front and not even bother or say, Hey, this could be something. Let's see what we can make happen. Beautiful. Yeah. So if you're an agent and you're looking to increase your business or work more with investors, interview the investor, just like you would anyone say, Hey, what's your criteria with, you know, where do you need to be, you know, with, with properties. And I'll tell you guys, um, you know, follow, follow double L seven because she's sending us stuff every day and don't think I don't see it. Like I do, right? Like we're busy we're you know, homeschooling and doing all this stuff. I, we see everything. And before it was just you and Christy talking and I, and Christy would, was bombarding me with all these properties. I said, get me on the thread. I need to know what's happening here. It's too much. You're buying houses. I don't know what's going on. And then I got on the thread and I was like, take me off this thread. There's too many deals. There's too many off. Right. Um, but we love it. We love it. So keep them coming. And, and that brings us to number three, not, you know, not being afraid to make offers. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, I mean, we're not talking big deal, like volume price points, right? We're talking kind of on the front end, you know, you're looking at something that's a little on the lower side and needs a lot of work. It might be, you know, what I say is not a real sexy deal. You know, it's yeah. not like that property you want to throw up on your homepage and be like, look what I just did. Right. Um, but you know, you got to be able to, a lot of the agents I speak to are super open and um, honest and willing to share what they know about their property, about the, the seller and what the threshold of um, offer they're at. So I can say, Hey, you know, I kind of tell them I'm working with an investor, which I think is important to let someone know up front because they're going to mentally prepare to hear like, OK, these people aren't going to come in at, you know, over ask and all this. So kind of talking about, you know, well, these are the things that we see that need to be done. And what else do you know what needs to happen? And, and are they open to negotiation? How motivated are they? Do they feel ready to move on from this property? How do you think they would feel about an offer at about this price? And um, well, hold on, stop. <laughs> so, you, so you just said, you just worded that beautifully. Instead of saying, "Hey, is your seller motivated? Are they motivated?" Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, back off! Like, you know, get out of here. <laughs> what, what did you say instead of that? You said, "Are they are they ready to move on from this property? Are they ready to are they ready to be done with this? Cross yeah. their list." I love that. I love that. And, and so you're, and you frame it when you call, you know, like, Hey, you know, I'm working with an investor, you know, this, you know, is if it's a situation where, you know, they need a lot of work and they're ready to move on. Right. It's not like, are you motivated? Right. <laughs> it's a piece of crap. You, you need to sell it for less. Right. Yeah, no, definitely not. And yeah. then it also depends on what kind of listing it is. Is this an inherited listing? Are these people just, was this dumped in their lap and they just want to get rid of it? Or have they been holding on to it and they're just done? You know, yeah. they don't want to deal with it anymore. And it's gotten to the point where they're not going to fix it up. They don't want to deal with it. They just want to go. And, yeah. um, you know, the agent, sometimes they're like, where Christy will say pound sand, like they just don't want you around. They're like, no, I don't want to hear that kind of an offer. And you say, okay, well, thanks. You know, and I just kind of follow that listing and I keep an eye on it, it goes under contract, it falls out, reach back out and be like, Hey, 
you know, yeah. how are you doing now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, how you doing now? Yeah. yeah, how you doing now? No, 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 right? <laughs> hey, just following up, right? Yeah. Um, and there's a science to it, and you got it figured out. Um, and, and, and that leads us to number four, which is following up on the leads. And I know that you, do, you know, keep us in the loop. And one thing that I really appreciate, too, is it's not just following up on the houses that are still for sale. You also follow up on the properties um, as they sell. And so if we miss out on one, you, you say, hey, look, this look what came back on the market. And it's, you know, they fixed it up and it's like, holy crap, they're selling it for that. Jeez, maybe we should have came up, come up a little bit more or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, yeah. The house that we just closed on the one next door, my wife's like, we need to buy that. We need to buy the one next door. And I was like, ah, I don't know. Like, I don't like have all my apples in one basket. You know, like what if the, you know, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I should have bought it because somebody bought it. Right. Somebody did and they're fixing it up and they're fixing it up. Right. Yeah. And I hope they, I hope they make a ton of money. Yeah. I'm anxious to see how it turns out too, but, um, but it's fun. I like to watch the properties that I know, like, you or Christy might be on the fence about, and you're kind of like, oh, I'm kind yeah. of into it. I'm not really sure. And I just kind of keep a list. And when it goes under contract, I'll send you a note and be like, hey, guess which one went under contract? Or let's keep an eye on it. And yep. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Sure. You know, because I, I, I've been preaching on here that a great strategy is following up with pendings that fall out of contract. Yeah. You know, people going through it. Now, now someone else let them know how crappy their house is. <laughs> and the condition of it and you know we can come in and it's you know less abrasive i think sometimes yeah All right, last but not least um previewing the properties yeah this has been huge for us you know if, if you're out at a house and you're looking at something and you just shoot us a text message and say hey uh you want to facetime real quick tell, tell everybody about that system that you have yeah i mean i was in a situation where i'll be out showing a house maybe that i hadn't thought about for you guys based on whatever reason. But if I was looking at it for someone else, like last week, I think, and I walked in, I was like, Hey, you know, maybe this is something for, for Christy and Noah. And I finished that showing and sent you a text and said, Hey, you want to take a look at this? And, you know, after talking to the agent a little bit, it ended up not being something for us, but I mean, it's a good opportunity so that everyone's schedules are crazy. Right. So if I'm already there and we have the technology to be able to show it to you, that saves you all a trip to have to come all the way down from where you are to where I am to make it make sense for both of us. So, and like, I just did that um, yesterday, I think too. Yeah, you did. Yeah. On that one property. And it was great. I think it was a good thing because had you taken your time to come over there, it would have been like, this isn't worth our time to even, I didn't even walk into the house and we knew right away that it wasn't going to be the right fit. So, you know, that saves you all that time. And I was in the area and I'm like, Hey, I can be here. You know, yeah, I'm already yeah, lots of things, yeah, and I think sometimes people, you know, investors, one of the biggest things, um, lessons learned, is, you know, for us is what's the neighborhood look like? You mm -hmm. know, on paper, on Zillow, on the MLS, a house can can check all of the boxes, but what does the neighborhood look like? What's going on behind and front? You know, if someone is um, sitting on their back deck, what are they looking at? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget my wife and I flipped the house in Florida. I was on a canal. It was beautiful. And we're like, why isn't this house selling? And we went down there. Um, it actually ended up selling. We went down there for the closing. Uh, we were going for a vacation. just happened to be the same time. And we went to the house and I walked out on the dock under the tiki bar and everything. And I looked across the street and it was like a, or across the canal. And it was like a junkyard. <sighs> and no one had ever said that the crappiest house in all of Cape Coral, Florida is behind yours <laughs> ever. And I was like, how did we miss this? So now like part of our system as investors is saying, Hey, okay, what's across behind around. And I think the one yesterday you went and looked at, there was, you know, that was the case. It just, you know, yeah. Next door across the street was just sort of like, nah. Yeah. So, so what's next? Like what, where do you see your business um, growing? You know, what, what, what are some goals for you for the rest of 2021? Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, my I'm pretty new to the to the whole industry, so it's kind of a, a slow burn, I guess, or hopefully not slow, but at the moment I'm trying to be realistic. And, um, you know, I'm hoping to get one deal a month. That's sort of my goal for 12 months, so 12 deals. I'm at six since inception, so I'm on my way. And um, just keep trucking along and, and hopefully, you know, working with you all, 
to be able to move on to the next one. I always want to keep that relationship good and strong and know that I'm still working for you guys and trying to find it. And Don't forget about us when, when you become, you know, <laughs> So big, you know, like the biggest real estate agent in all of Columbia. <laughs> I truly believe that you have what it takes. Um, so here's your, that's your number, right? Yes, sir. And that's your hand, that, that's your handle? That's yeah. What, that's Facebook, what call Instagram, it. yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Um, hey, thank you so much for being on the show, the big show. You yeah. Added a ton of value, I know, to this group. And guys, I'm telling you, if you're watching this, this is a kick-ass real estate agent. Sorry, I don't know if I, this is my first time ever swearing. Um <laughs> <laughs> Big show, but you are you're kick ass. You don't get the name like Double Out Seven for nothing. Um, now's the time. Now's the time. Plant your roots with someone like Double Out Seven, like Leslie Lindley. <laughs> and I know she's gonna work for you and, and kick butt. So thank you so much. Um, and if they need to get a hold of you, they can call you, text you, on your website, all that stuff too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks again for having me and inviting me. It's been it's been a lot of fun getting to work with you too and and learn your system. So it's been a good time. All right, we only need 13 more to hit your goal. That's right. <laughs> let's do it. All right, let's do it. Rings on the front grill, raise a couple mil so I can make a deal. Now I'm feeling too trail like it isn't real. Whether you win it for the love or the thrill, live life and stop.